Hey everybody, welcome to my summer of 2022 outdoor heat and UV tests. Last year, you'll remember if you watch my channel, I did an outdoor heat and UV test where I tested, you know, eight or ten different filaments to see which one with, would withstand the heat and UV here. And I live in the desert in Arizona, USA. And you'll see that in last year, I think I started on July 1st. This year, it's June 9th. If you see my little thing here, my little weather station, it's 11.59 a.m. It's 112 in the shade on my porch and 9% humidity. And the UV rating is, of course, maxed out at a 10. My house faces, in front of my house faces the east, the back of my house faces the west. So um, I get the full brunt of the summertime afternoon sun on the back of my house. This year, instead of testing different filaments, I'm going to test different spray-on products. Now, I'll put a link above, if I didn't say, to my tests from last year. Last year, by far, the, the, the filament that discolored the worst in the UV and the heat was transparent or natural PLA. The transparent and natural ABS also discolored. Resin discolored as well, but it discolored quickly and then bleached back out again, whereas the other two did not. I don't have any of those same filaments anymore. I've used all that up. But I do have a brand new package of Cheapo Transparent PLA. That's what we're going to use for the test. And I'm going to be testing these different products on it. Now what I'm trying to prevent is this. The one toward my face is transparent. I think it's PLA. It might be um, ABS. I can't remember. But the, it's the same filament and the one on the left stayed in the house. The one on the... On the other side, the yellowed one, that is the one that was out on my Jeep all summer. So that's what I'm trying to prevent. Let's take a look at the products that I'm going to see if I can do something with. And in no particular order, some of these products I bu just bought brand new, some of them I've had floating around for a while, so take that into account. And I'm going to try some, some of these products specifically claim to protect against UV, some don't, but I thought, hey, you know, I've got them floating around. Let's try them. Maybe it'll do something. So, first, I've got Rust-Oleum Clear Spray Paint. This is actually a paint, not just a coating. And you'll see right on the front, it says UV Protection. We're going to try that. That's the only paint that I have. The rest are all spray-on, protectants, waxes, things like that. So, that's the paint. I have here, this is Turtle Wax Hybrid Ceramic Spray Coating. Um, and it also, somewhere on here I saw it says it protects against UV. I'm not going to try and find the print on every one of them for you. I have, for sport and amusement, because I have it around, Armor All Glass UV Protection. And it also, I don't know if it says UV Protection on this one, it is a glass coating. Meant for you like your car glass. I have Armor All Original Protectant, which certainly claims to protect against UV. I have Armor All Outlast Trim and Plastic Restore, which does claim to be a UV protectant. I have Scotch Guard Outdoor, which is kind of meant for fabric, but you know what? Let's give it a go. And it does also claim to be a UV protectant. I have Turtle Wax Ice Spray Wax. I have my favorite from long ago. This is the automotive version of 303. I've been using 303 for many years because the boat guys all swore by it. Probably been using 303 for 30 years. But um, this is their automotive version of it, which I have never tried before. But it says interior and exterior ultimate, ultimate UV protection. To, to quote the guy from Project Farm, we're going to test that. Uh, and you know what? Just for sport and amusement, let's try WD-40 as well. And also, let's also try Aquanet Hairspray because, you know, I use it in 3D printing. Let's see if it does anything. And hiding back here, which I don't think I showed you, I have some heavy-duty silicone spray. Now, of course, these last few products don't say anything about UV, but I've got them around and we're printing that and sitting out in the sun, so let's give them a go. 
The printer I'm going to use is my my um, Geetech A10M with the SKR 1.4 board. Lots of modifications on this printer. If you want to know what all the modifications are, I'll put a link above to the series where I've modified that to hell and back. And I am going to print. Let me bring it up on the screen here, see if you can see it. I am going to print the same little 50 by 50 millimeter tags that I did the last time. And um, and this is what they look like. I don't know if you can see that. Let me zoom in a bit. I could do a screen capture, but you know what the heck. Let's just do this. I'm going to print these. This is just a 55, 50 by 50 millimeter little tag, 10 millimeter hole in the top. I'm going to print these in Cura, in Cura 5, and I'm going to be using a, mo a slightly modified version of Chep's Super Fast Print Profile just because I want to knock these out. So that's the setup, and that's what we're going to do. And if I have to do it twice, I will, hopefully this filament's going to perform for me and it's going to yellow really badly and we'll see if any of these things really work. I've been using these type of products for years and years and years. Let's see if any of them really work and will they work on 3D so that's printing. it for this video. This was just a quick introduction to let you guys know what I'm up to. I'm going to get the 3D printing done, get the pegboard out in the backyard, get the hooks on it get all these things printed and labeled and in the next video which hopefully will be in a couple of days i will have this all out and we'll get this started thanks for watching bye for now